Welcome to the Fundamentals of Ultrasound Physics Lecture Series by The Ohio State University College of Medicine. Today's lecture is going to be on quality assurance. In this lecture, we'll be covering the need and nature of QA, parameters to be evaluated, and methods of evaluation. The need and nature of QA is basically what is quality assurance and why do we need to do it. The parameters and the methods, which we'll be looking at together, is what do we evaluate and how do we evaluate it. Quality assurance is a periodic assessment to make sure that your machines are still working properly. Ultrasound machines are very complicated. Things can go wrong in a number of steps. And consistently testing things is a good way to see what is working, what isn't, and how to fix it. So why do we test? To assess the performance between different systems, to monitor wear and tear of the machines over time, to minimize our artifacts so that we can get the best images we want to get. Well, the most imprecise way to talk about quality assurance is to say that we want to monitor image quality. One way that we can monitor that is by taking images using a healthy model and taking a look at these images and seeing if we see change over time or see gross problems with the images. This is kind of a subjective method and it's not a great way to do quality assurance, but if you don't have anything else, it's, it's better than nothing. The most common way we test these parameters and the more rigorous way to test these parameters is using a tissue mimicking phantom. Now you've probably seen these phantoms around. They generally look like blue gel plastic blocks. What they do is they mimic the ultrasonographic characteristics we're looking to measure using a gel. To mimic the attenuation characteristics of tissue, this gel is interspersed with small graphite particles. The practical upshot of all of this is that within the gel, the speed of sound is 1540 meters per second which is the same as it is in tissue on average, and the same speed that the machine assumes when doing calculations. As far as the attenuation coefficient is concerned, it's generally between 0.5 and 0.7 decibels per centimeter per megahertz. This is similar to tissue. If you are choosing or buying these phantoms for your own practice, I would recommend the 0.7 decibel per centimeter per megahertz phantoms as these will be more of a challenge to measure against for your quality assurance program. Now I'm sure that when you've seen these phantoms underneath the probe, you've noticed that they're not just blue homogeneous tissue un underneath. They usually have reflectors within them. Sometimes these reflectors are hyperechoic targets. Sometimes they're liquid-filled tubes to resemble anechoic structures. Here we have a uh, mock drawing of a tissue-mimicking phantom that we may refer back to as we discuss specific ultrasonographic properties. One of the properties we would measure using a tissue-mimicking phantom is called uniformity. Uniformity basically means that if you're looking at the same tissue underneath the probe, you want it all to look the same. Liver should look should like liver everywhere. Kidney should look like kidney everywhere. Liver in the near field should look like liver in the far field. Liver on the leading edge should look like liver on the receiving edge. What that means more rigorously is given homo a homogeneous medium, we want to have the same brightness throughout the image. If you look and you see a non-uniformity, you might see a vertical stripe that comes across the screen where the brightness is lower or you might see a horizontal band across the screen where the brightness is lower. Those are kinds of non-uniformities that would require you to really call the maintenance team that works on your ultrasound machines. Some of the causes for non-uniformity can be a bad element in the piezoelectric array, a loose wire from one of those elements back to the transducer, problems with the side-to-side -side compensation, that's more of an electrical problem in the computer end, and discontinuities between the transmit and receive focal zones. Again, that's a more computer-oriented problem than one you'd be able to fix yourself. If you'll recall, we've previously mentioned that it's very difficult to image things that are close to the surface, things in the very near field. The area of the ultrasound image where we really can't image and can't resolve things at all is called the dead zone. 
this place is far from the focal zone and it's an area where the beam has not yet converged. We usually measure this area using a tissue mimicking phantom. We use a phantom with a row of reflectors going from the surface to the deepest portion of the, the phantom. We then measure with ultrasound the distance from the surface to the first reflector that we can see and resolve. The area from the surface to that reflector is the dead zone. This is absolutely one of those parameters you'll be monitoring over time. And an increase in the dead zone would be characteristic of deterioration of your ultrasound probe. The next characteristic you want to consider measuring is the depth calibration accuracy. Sometimes you may see this referred to as the vertical distance measurement accuracy. You can use the same phantom as you used to measure the dead zone. The phantom again involves a vertical column of reflectors straight down. Each reflector is the same distance away from one another. You measure the distance between different reflectors using the calipers. You already know how far away the reflectors are from one another, so you can test how accurate your measurement using the ultrasound is. Usually, for a lower frequency probe, you want to choose reflectors that are 8 to 10 and then 3 to 4 centimeters away from one another. For small parts or high frequency probes, you want to test on 3 to 4 centimeters or 1 to 2 centimeters away from each other. These measurements should be accurate to 1.5% of the actual distance or to 1 millimeter, whichever of these numbers is larger. The next thing we should discuss is the horizontal distance measurement accuracy or the lateral distance measurement accuracy. It's very similar to the vertical distance measurement accuracy. Do you use a phantom with horizontally oriented fibers instead of vertically oriented fibers? And using calipers, you measure the distance between reflectors. Remember that this number will be less accurate than vertical measurement because our highest accuracy and our highest resolution is in the axial direction.